From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Six men were murdered in a hail of bullets after men wearing black, brandishing high-powered assault rifles and handguns, ambushed them at the intersection of Jerome Avenue and Chesapeake Road. A woman and a two-year-old girl, who were in a separate vehicle but believed to be related to one of the deceased victims, were critically injured in the gun attack police have said. They were said to be in critical but stable condition in hospital last night. It unfolded shortly after the men were released from police custody. They were arrested earlier in the week for firearm possession, but were released hours before their deaths. Police said the men were not all held at the same station. They were at the Central Detective Unit and other locations. At least four of them were arrested after an incident at the foot of the old Paradise Island Bridge, which was noted in an earlier police press release. The remaining two men and others were also arrested for similar incidents. As the six men pulled up to the intersection in a silver Honda Inspire shortly after five last night, a white Kia SUV trailed behind them. Four men in black then emerged from the SUV, two with high-powered weapons, and shot at the victims. Police suspect it was a gang-related attack. A 28-year-old man from Cheshire Key died after a traffic accident in Abaco yesterday. According to reports, shortly before 8 p.m., a white 2002 Chevrolet Silverado with two male occupants and a brown Daihatsu Mira with a lone male driver collided on the SC Boodle Highway near the area of Treasure Key Airport. The driver of the Daihatsu Mira was ejected out of the vehicle on impact just before it burst into flames. He was later pronounced dead by a doctor at the Marsh Harbor Community Clinic. The driver and passenger of the Chevrolet Silverado Colorado also received serious injuries but are in stable condition. Attorney General Carl Bethel has said there will be equal opportunity for the purchase of plots of land to Bahamians and residents, including those of Haitian descent, awaiting confirmation of immigration status. As he defended the Minnesota administration's resolution to establish an 83-acre upscale community in western New Providence, Mr. Bethel responded to detractors of the initiative, saying it was a response to changing demographics. He described it as a paradigm shift in housing policy for governments to follow. That resolution was passed in the Senate yesterday. Labor Director John Pinder has said his department has received several complaints about at least three different businesses trying to implement a new policy that mandates workers to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Failure to comply could result in workers losing their jobs or being forced to pay for weekly rapid antigen tests at some establishments. Yesterday, Mr. Pinder said the policy is not legal and further advised employers against implementing such rules. He also urged businesses to show compassion towards their staff during these hard economic times. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, police scoured a FedEx facility in Indianapolis and interviewed scores of witnesses Friday in search of a motive for the latest mass shooting to rock the U.S. as family members of the eight victims spent agonizing hours waiting for word on their loved ones. Authorities identified the shooter as a young man in his 20s. They said they could not yet say why he opened fire with a rifle late Thursday night at a FedEx processing center near the Indianapolis airport. China's success at controlling the coronavirus outbreak has resulted in a population that has seemed almost reluctant to get vaccinated. So it is accelerating its inoculation campaign by offering incentives, free eggs, store coupons, and discounts on groceries and merchandise to those getting a shot. After a slow start, China is now giving millions of shots a day. On March 26th alone, it administered 6.1 million shots. A top government doctor has announced a June goal of vaccinating 560 million of the country's 1.4 billion people. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A high pressure ridge will continue to support stable conditions and light to moderate winds across the area today. Beachgoers should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents at north and east coast beaches due to northeasterly swells. For all areas, it'll be partly to mostly sunny and warm today, fair and mild tonight. Small craft operators should exercise caution due to northeasterly swells. Winds south to southwest at 10 to 15. 15 knots in the northwest and central Bahamas and east to southeast at 10 knots or less in the southeast Bahamas. Winds falling light and variable at times across all areas. Seas 2 to 4 feet in the northwest and central Bahamas and 3 to 4 feet over the ocean in the southeast Bahamas. Seas slightly higher across all areas in northeasterly swells. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 86 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 68. The sun will set this afternoon at 731 and will rise tomorrow morning at 646. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at tribune242.com.